Shanakia Rajaputiran, who's a Sri Lankan MP and joining us live on the broadcast. Uh, Mr. Rajaputiran, uh, what do you make of these protests today? Some very dramatic visuals coming over there. The protesters, of course, are refusing to back down. So is the security deployment resorting to uh, firing tear gas. What can we expect next? Should we uh, expect a repeat of what happened on Saturday as the protesters seem all set to enter the Prime Minister's office now? Well, uh, this needs to end right now. This needs to end right now. The Prime Minister needs to resign right now. Uh, even though the President has promised to resign on the 13th, he still hasn't resigned. And the Prime Minister has declared a state of emergency and he's not uh, allowed to do that because he's not the executive president. So right now as an MP, uh, as you can clearly see, you, you are very much up to date on what's happening on the ground. What needs to happen right now is the international community needs to intervene. India needs to intervene. The United States needs to intervene and ask the Prime Minister to step down immediately because uh, during the last stages of the war in 2009, um, thousands of people were killed and the, the war was not stopped. Uh, right now, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a situation where the Prime Minister refuses to resign and, and is seeming to uh, get ready or prepare for... Uh, prepare to take the protesters on with the heavy military presence in Colombo. And you see that the protesters are not going, they're going to be unstoppable because the country is, the country is asking the president and the pres uh, prime minister both to resign. And if the prime minister hopes to stay in power by force using the military, uh, it's going to be very unpleasant. So I, I, I really like to urge the international community to intervene, the, the European Union, India, uh, all, the, all the, the United Kingdom, all the countries, uh, Japan, everybody needs to speak to the Prime Minister right now and ask him to resign uh, to make the transition smooth. So there is no way that Sri Lanka is going to accept Ranil Vikramasinghe as the acting president. Uh, there is no way that Sri Lanka is going to accept anyone from the ruling party, the Podujana Peramuna, uh, which the President Rajapaksha and the Prime Minister, right. Raj, former Prime Minister Rajapaksha, his brother Basil Rajapaksha, and they belong to. It's their party. The, pe the people in Sri Lanka are not going to accept a president or a prime minister who has the backing on the support, who is backed by the government party, who are the sole responsible people for this crisis. So we need to look at uh, somebody that the people accept uh, to take on this role for this transition Mr. period. Mr. Rajaputran, how, then, how uh, confident are you that, uh, the, that the prime minister is not, uh, is not going to resign and that he will take over as the interim president, considering it was on 9th of July itself that uh, Ranil Vikrama Singh uh, tweeted saying that he, might, he would be resigning if uh, Gotabaya Rajapaksha resigns. And that is something uh, that is on the lines that we are going to, ex uh, we are expecting the resignation to be announced today itself. Well, uh, I, am, I am not confident at all that the Prime Minister is going to resign because if he was going to resign, all he had to do this morning was issue a statement that he's going to resign today and uh, that, uh, that he's working out transition arrangements. So the, the way the military is lined up, the way they are gearing up, they're gearing up for Prime Minister to stay in power. So uh, if there was any chance that the Prime Minister was going to resign, he should just make a statement right now and I'm sure the protesters will all go back home and Sri Lanka will go back to peace. There's, these protesters are not demanding for anything uh, anything else other than just a resignation. It's only a flick of the pen. If the Prime Minister does not know how to type the letter, I can type it on his behalf and send it to him. All he has to do is sign it. So I'm sure 22 million Sri Lankans are ready to prepare the letter if that's what's taking time. So, you know, I, 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 I strongly feel that the Prime Minister is not in a mood to resign at all. And, uh, and, and, and that is why the military is being brought in. So I would like to urge the international community not to watch, not be spectators, not be spectators at this current situation, because I know that the country, it's, it's, not, it's not always possible to interfere in another country's affairs. But in a crisis situation like this, uh, it's the responsibility of the international community to intervene uh, so we don't see uh, chaos in this country. And, and especially India does not want its neighbor to be un so unstable because... Uh, you know, it's, we are so close to India. We are almost uh, uh, closer to uh, Jaffna Peninsula, is closer to India than closer to the capital city. So uh, I would really like to see um, the international community intervene and ask the, urge the prime minister to step down. That is the only way because the protesters are not going to back down. Uh, there's curfew has been imposed, but only all you see is more people coming into Colombo. And today being a public holiday in Sri Lanka because it's a full moon day. Uh, there are going to be more and more protesters who are going to come to Colombo because today is a holiday.
Mr. Rajputiran, um, India has already extended its support uh, to for a peaceful uh, transition of power and uh, we are very much with uh, Sri Lanka as has already been announced by the external affairs ministry in our country. Uh, there has already been a lot of economic assistance granted to we Sri Lanka. We are very Lanka thankful. We are very thankful to the government of India for all the economic uh, uh, support because without the support of India, Sri Lanka could have not survived the last four months. And uh, we are very thankful to the government of India and also to the Tamil Nadu chief minister who sent essential supplies. But right now, what we need is a very strong message to be sent to the prime minister, uh, and 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 more than uh, more than urging them, it, an intervention is needed uh, to stop this crisis. Mr. Rajaputran, the other question that is plaguing Sri Lanka right now is what happens constitutionally uh, at the, I know it is still in the realm of speculation that uh, Ranil Vikrama Singhe might just resign. But if he resigns, what is the process that will be followed to ensure that there is a democratic uh, and a smooth transition of power? Well, if the president and the prime minister both resign at the same time, next in line is the speaker. So the speaker will be appointed as the acting uh, prime minister for a period of uh, for a period of time, and within that period of time, we can find somebody uh, that the people. It, it is important that the public accept the next leader. It's not important that uh, because right now in parliament, uh, Rajapaksha's party has uh, two thirds majority in parliament, so the opposition has very limited numbers. So, so for an opposition MP to prove majority in parliament is going to be very difficult. So. They need to make way for a minority government if that's what it takes. So, uh, if and the speaker can take over, and then the speaker can appoint somebody whom the public accept. It's important that the public of the country accept uh, the person who is going to be the leader of the country for the transitional period. It's not, but unfortunately, uh, the Rajapaksha's and Ranil Vikramasinghe seem to be uh, thinking along the lines that they have majority in parliament, therefore that they can still stay in power. But it's not about. Uh, who has majority also, parliament, Mr. Rajapu, who has majority support of the people? What would you like to say about the escape plan of the Rajapakshas? Do you, how do you see the role of the international community, considering we all know that he's landed in Malay uh, in the wee hours of today, and uh, that was something that was negotiated by the Maldivian uh, parliamentary speaker, uh, and we all know that Rajapakshas are now expected to head to the UAE eventually. How do you gauge uh, the international assistance uh, that he's received so far for this passage? I'm not able to comment on the Maldivian speaker facilitating because uh, these are all unconfirmed news to me still. But uh, however, the, 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 the international community should stand by the country and the Sri Lankans. The international community should not stand by Gotabe Rajapaksha or any individual. They should stand with the 22 million people in Sri Lanka. And uh, it's important. And, and UAE, if they think that they're going to give uh, Gotabe Rajapaksha safe haven, uh, UAE being a Muslim country, they should be aware that uh, Muslims were not even allowed to bury their loved ones who, were di who died from the COVID-19 pandemic because uh, Rajapaksha, who is a racist, uh, did not allow the Muslims to even bury their loved ones uh, according to their religion. So if the UAE is going to help uh, Rajapaksha uh, find a safe haven in, uh, uh, in, in UAE, they, they will be... Uh, committing, uh, they will be, they will be, they will be counterproductive to uh, the Muslim community in Sri Lanka as well. The Muslim community, uh, in fact, the uh, Islamic or the countries of uh, Islamic, or I think it's the I IOC, uh, uh, Islamic Countries Organization, right. uh, urged the Rajapaksa government to allow the Muslims to bury their loved ones when they died, but the Rajapaksa government never listened to it, and hundreds of Muslims who who died in the COVID-19 pandemic. Their bodies were forcefully cremated. Even a body of a one-month-old child right. who died of the COVID-19 pandemic last was cremated. Last but not the uh, least, uh, Mr. Rajaputaran, I'm going to also ask you to focus on the economic impact of what's happening in your country right now. Because uh, we've already learned that uh, after the Maldivian president actually fled the country, there's been an impact. Bonds have fallen to a fresh low itself. Uh, how do you see... Uh, the protests now impacting the economy, especially taking into consideration the last few days, ever since what's happened at the presidential palace on Saturday? Well, every single day that uh, the, the, the Rajapakshas have refused to resign, and every single day that uh, from now onwards that Ranil Vikram Singh, the Prime Minister, refuses to resign, is going to severely impact Sri Lanka's economy. And Sri Lanka, our foreign reserves are next to zero. Uh, as a bankrupt country, I think we really need to come out of this crisis ASAP. 
and and the political crisis and the economic crisis are connected to each other there is no way that we can address the economic crisis till we address the political crisis because even for imf negotiations uh, it should be a leader who is trusted by the country who is going to do it so uh, the country's economy is going to further collapse and we don't have fuel right now uh, every everything has come to a standstill and uh, schools have come to a standstill so basically uh basically it's going to only get worse and 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 this all this could have been uh, averted when uh, the protest first started when gotabe rajapaksa himself uh, said that it was a mistake to uh, ban fertilizer said that we should have that he should he made a mistake by not going to the right. imf earlier right. and when he uh, held the dollar by force at 200 when he uh, used the foreign reserves to pay for foreign loans uh, you know then itself he should have resigned so we should have we could have averted this crisis right. so in terms of the economy i think it's very hard to speculate anything or it's very hard to uh, just pick out single out uh, the economy on its own because there is no way forward for the economy uh, or the share market or any investment unless this political crisis is resolved absolutely and we are going to be uh, i think sri lanka is certainly going to need assistance from the imf as well having said that mr rajaputra many thanks for joining us on this newscast and with that let's now shift our focus